ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to my channel for another third-party, unlicensed, 1-6 scale figure unboxing and review video. Now, today, we are going to be taking a look at the Hot Heart Dark Warrior Mr. Matt. Now, if the name confuses you, I don't blame you. It's a bit of a weird one. But this is Matt Murdock as Daredevil in the black costume from Season 1. A lot of y'all asked me to take a look at this guy, and I thought I didn't need him because I have the Soso -so Toys version. But then y'all rightly pointed out that that is based off the later season looks for the black suit, whereas this one is from Season 1. Now, I got mine from Comic Sanctorum, and I have popped the link in the description below for your reference purposes only. This is by no means a promotional video, this is a review on a figure I picked up for my own personal collection. What we are going to do now, though, is get the box laying flat in the light box and do the unboxing. Here, of course, we have the box art, and being my first figure from the company, I had no idea what to expect, but it is relatively classy. A silhouetted image of Matt Murdock on the front of the box, Mr. Matt the Dark Warrior down below, nothing really on the side, plus a bunch of warnings on the back. Now, the box does come in an outer slipcover that's pretty much just all black, so I decided not to show it, but when you get yours in hand, you'll know what I'm talking about. As for the figure himself, I don't know if this is a second version that is a lot dirtier, but that's the first thing that I noticed. This guy is absolutely filthy. And to be honest, it's something different, so I'm all for it. What we are going to do now, though, is get all of his accessories laid out in the light box and take a closer look at everything he comes with. Here we have all the parts and pieces. Now, unfortunately, there is one key omission, and that's the display base. I'm of the mindset that all 1-6 scale figures, irrespective of being licensed or not, should come with at the very least a simple oval style display base. But unfortunately, you don't get one here. You do, however, get an interchangeable unmasked head sculpt. Now, you may be sitting there thinking, Justin, what are you talking about? He very clearly is wearing a mask, and yes, he is. This mask, I'm pretty sure, is meant to be held in his hands, but it's a nice stretchy fabric, and you can actually put it on the unmasked sculpt. And for the most part, it looks really good. Except for up the top here, where you can see the bump out where his hair is supposed to be. But other than that, yeah, I could see a lot of people using this in their display. The texture of the fabric and the fact that it can actually stretch over the top is a nice touch. I also like the dirt and grime on the surface and the real tassels around the back. But of course, you can remove it, exposing this head sculpt. Now, Soso -So Toys already gave us an amazing masked and unmasked version of Matt Murdock, aka Charlie Cox. This has a lot to live up to, and unfortunately, in my opinion, I think it falls a little short. From some angles, I can see Charlie Cox, but from others, I can see Ryan Reynolds and a whole host of other people. Do let me know what you think of this head sculpt down in the comments below, but for me, it's a bit of a miss. You do get two of his batons, and I'm pleased to report that these are actually real wood. That's something that I wasn't expecting, but when you look at the ends, you can totally see that there is the texture of what appears to be real wood. They have been painted quite well with some darker sections towards the ends, and they're lighter towards the middle. You will see them in the holsters on his leg a little bit later in the video. Now, unfortunately, on my figure, I've got two left gripping hands. I'm hoping that's not going to be an issue for you, because it's kind of iconic for him to be holding both of his weapons, but with mine, I simply can't do it. Nevertheless, fingers crossed, as I said, yours doesn't have that problem. As for the hands themselves, they look great. The texture to the sculpt, the paint applications, and the dirtiness get ticks from me. I do also like that they've used real twine that wraps around the hands, although correct me if I'm wrong, but in season one when he was wearing the black suit, didn't he not have the twines? Wasn't that a later thing? 
anyway, I could be misremembering. You also do get two ungloved hands. They are just the cheap and nasty waxy third party hands, but they are there if you decide you want to use them. What we are going to do now though, is get Daredevil himself out here and take a closer look. Here we have him standing straight up and down in the light box, no crazy poses or accessories or anything like that. And for the most part, I'm pretty happy. Is this guy perfect? No, and we'll discuss why in just a second, but let's talk about how he looks just standing there. I love the body, the proportions are great. He's big and muscular, but you can still tell he's athletic at the same time, he's not overly large. I also love the weathering from head to toe, this guy has been through hell and you can tell just by looking at him. The way everything sits and comes together on the body is also really nicely done. What we are going to do now though is take him off the rotating turntable, punch in and take a closer look at the details. Here we have him up close and personal. Now in just a second we will pop on the unmasked head sculpt just to see what it looks like on the body. As for the masked sculpt, I like it. I don't love it. If it existed in a vacuum and the So So Toys one wasn't as good as it is, I think this one would be more than serviceable. But we do have the So So Toys one and it's fantastic. The likeness is on point. I don't really see it here. I do like the glossy wet look to the blood on his cheek and the subtle battle damage around the corner of his mouth, plus the mask is sculpted quite nicely. There is dirt and grime on the surface, you can make out the crevices where his eyes would be and the tops of his ears, plus the tassels around the back that are also weathered. All of that from a technical perspective is well done, it's just the likeness that lets it down. It also sits weirdly high on the neck. You can make him look forward, which kind of mitigates it a little bit, but from the side, yeah, it's definitely a thing. Now I'm not sure which body they've gone with, but I really like it. The muscle mass and the definition is all there, plus the articulation is fairly decent. Over the top of that though, he of course has the Daredevil Black outfit. Now it is based off the season one look kind of. He does have the arm wraps, which I'm pretty sure came into play later on in the series, do correct me if I'm wrong, but they are a real material or twine. They have been glued together, so it's a nice solid piece, and then you do have some down here on his hands as well. He also has dirt and grime from head all the way down to his toes. I don't know if the first version looked like this, but I really like it, I'm partial to a battle damage figure, and that's exactly how I see this guy. Daredevil got beat up in the show, so this makes perfect sense. Now the shirt is a nice stretchy black fabric, you do have some red lines and these grey panels screen printed over the top. In the show, it's kind of like when you flip a shirt inside out and you can see the seams. That's what these red lines were. So it's not super accurate to have them as vibrant and prominent as they are here, but at the very least they are represented. I'm not mad about the way they look. Now coming down to the pants, I have attached his holster section with his weapons on one side. They are also suitably dirty, so they match the rest of the outfit. I'm not sure about this belt buckle though. It's very big, very glossy, and kind of looks like something you'd wear with a business suit. Do let me know if this belt buckle is actually accurate down below. He does have some real working pockets on his pants, and then coming down to his boots, they are just military style boots. They're a fixed rubbery plastic, if they'd done a split cut boot design here, just like the actual Hot Toys Daredevil, you would have had more range, but as it stands, you don't get a ton. I do like the dry brushing on the surface, it brings out all of that gorgeous sculpted in detail, and you do have fully sculpted treads down below. It's also worth noting that Daredevil wears Bates, which is an actual military shoe making brand, so I'm glad they got that detail down pat. But as for the other head sculpt, yeah, I still don't really like it even on the body. I mean, I guess from certain angles you can kind of start to see a little bit of Charlie Cox in there, but for the most part I'm going to be going with the mask head sculpt in my display. 
Now, you could technically try and find a Soso Toys Matt Murdock head sculpt and upgrade him if Unmasked is absolutely the way you have to go, but for me, this head sculpt isn't really an option. Now for a quick side-by-side -side comparison, here we have the Hot Heart Daredevil on the left and the Soso Toys version on the right. Now they are very clearly aiming for different things. The Soso Toys one is from the later seasons, whereas the Hot Heart I'm pretty sure is from season one, still correct me if I'm wrong, but nevertheless they do things slightly differently and each figure has its advantages. With Soso, I like the head sculpt better, I like the wraps better, and I like the split cut boot design. I'm also partial to the body, but then again the Hot Heart one still has a really good looking body, and I like the tight fit nature of the clothing. I might combine both of these to make what would be, in my opinion, the ultimate black suited daredevil, because as I said, each of these do things a little bit better than the other, so merging them together could make the perfect figure. Nevertheless, hopefully this gives you a rough idea of which one you want to go with in the display. Just going over articulation. Now bear in mind this is my personal copy of the figure, so I'm going to be a little bit more careful. I'm sure when you get yours in hand, you can push the joints slightly further than I am willing to go. Now starting off with the head sculpt, it is on a fixed neck, meaning there's a ball joint at the base of the head itself. It does look forward and back, swivel and then pivot side to side. The arms will go up to there, they will go forward and back on soft ratchets, butterfly joint at the shoulder, then the bicep is entirely fixed, meaning you have a single bend at the elbow that also incorporates the swivel. You do get a regular 1-6 scale wrist peg. The torso does crunch forward and back on multiple joints, swivel and then pivot side to side. The legs do go forward to there, they will go out to there, swivel at the upper thigh, a double bend at the knee, and lastly a double ball peg down here for the ankle. Just wrapping up on the Hot Heart Dark Warrior aka the Black Suited Daredevil. Now going into this, I had no idea what to expect, I've never owned anything from this particular company. Now at the end of the video I can tell you I'm pretty happy. Is he perfect? No, I don't think he is. Is he better than the Soso Toys version? Also, no, that one's not perfect either, but it does actually look like Charlie Cox from the show. Whereas this one misses out on that one key element, being the likeness factor. Everything else is great. I like the outfit, I love the choice of body, the real wood for his batons, all awesome. The battle damage is also a very nice touch. But when it comes down to it, the likeness is super important for a lot of people and this one just doesn't have it. Now it's decent, don't get me wrong, if you put this guy in the back of your display maybe looking down, it'll work for you, but if you want one that screams Charlie Cox, I think that Soso Toys is the way to go. Now don't forget, this is third party unlicensed, that means it's an unofficial product. I got mine from Comic Sanctorum, I have popped the link in the description below for your reference purposes only. This is not a promotional video, this is a review on a figure I picked up for my own personal collection. While you're down there, why not check out the link to Six Scale Network, the Facebook group. Come along, chat figures, share photos of your collection, and of course, see what's coming up next on the channel. Like, comment and subscribe and we'll catch you in the next video.